1 Corinthians chapter 4, let a man so account of us. By inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul is giving these words. And Paul always had a ministry team, other ministers that were ministering with him. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. And true ministers of Christ do not mind accountability. And that's important. All of us as Christians should be accountable. As here it says, of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now, the Bible says this word stewards. And you think about a steward and somebody who's received something. And then you're supposed to do something with what it is that you've received. And the Bible says here in verse 2, moreover, it is required. It is required in stewards. It's a responsibility of a steward, someone who's taking care of something and caretaking. Moreover, it is required in stewards, notice, that a man be found faithful. That a man be found faithful. And I want you to notice those last three words. I like to preach them tonight as a challenge to every person in this room. Be found faithful. Be faithful found faithful. Would you mark those three words if they're not already marked in your Bible? Moreover, it is required in stewards. This is, this is what you're supposed to do as someone who's been given so much as each of us have been. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man or a woman be found faithful. Now, we know that God is faithful. How many of you are glad about that? Keep your marker here and jump over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. And many of you, it's just a turn of the page or maybe not even turning it. But look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. The first three words together out loud. Ready? God is faithful. One more time, say it like you mean it. Ready? God is faithful. Praise God. God is faithful. God is trustworthy. Uh, God is someone that we can depend on. God is constant. God is sure. God is always there for us. How many of you glad about that tonight? I'm, I'm glad there's never a time I go to God and I find out God ran out on me or God didn't show up for me. Hey, there's never been a time when God's not been faithful to this person right here. Uh, listen, I, I've not always been faithful to God, but thank God he's always been faithful to me. We serve a faithful God. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The Bible says it this way, unto whom much is given, much shall be required. And so ultimately, God is faithful. The question is, are we faithful to God? Are we faithful to God? We are to be stewards of all that God gives to us. First of all, how about our time? Our time. Think about it. The Bible says in Psalm 90, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. As I mentioned, I was just watching video this afternoon and my girls were all born and, 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 and watching and you grow up and you don't know how many days that you have. But you know this, like sand through an hourglass, it's just going by very, very quickly and our time is very precious. The Bible says redeeming the time, Ephesians 5, 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That idea of redeeming, it's to rescue it from loss. It's to make sure it doesn't get wasted. Time waits for no man, Ben Franklin said. And time is so, so precious. And so we're to be good stewards of our time. And we're to use our time for the Lord. Not only are we to use our time for the Lord, we should use our treasure for the Lord. Our treasure for the Lord. And, and you may not have a lot of it, but all of us have some. As we're living day by day and as God provides for us, uh, we're, required, we're required to be faithful in our giving. Giving is part of our worship. And we teach that the Bible says that we should be teaching, uh, be giving a tithe, a 10% as, as part of our giving to the Lord. And the Bible, we talk about tithes and offerings and, and the idea of giving and of our treasure. We're to be faithful in our giving to the Lord. 
We're not supposed to get in a pinch and say, well, God will have to wait. We're supposed to put the Lord first. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God will take care of us if we are faithful, and we are to be faithful with our time. We are to be faithful with our treasure. We're to be faithful with our talent, faithful with our talent. Every one of you have gifts and talents and abilities that God has given to you. You say, no, but it's all right. you don't understand. I'm not talented at, for instance, playing the piano like Miss Angela is. Well, almost no one is as talented as she is. Very few people. So don't make comparison to other people, especially in areas where you just know you don't have a chance. But everybody here, God made you uh, especially to be you and for your place in the local church body. And your gifts and your talents and your abilities, what you're able to do, you want to give those things to God and to be faithful in your stewardship of your talents. I'll give you one more. We ought to be faithful in the stewardship of our task. You say, what's that? That's jobs that God would give to us, ministry opportunities that God would give to us. I think it's crucial that we make the most of our opportunities to serve the king, to serve the king. Someday we're going to see the king. Aren't you excited about that? Man, we're going to get to see Jesus Christ. Church family, let me encourage you tonight. All the nonsense we're dealing with this in this world and all the flesh, your own flesh, that just drives you crazy. Hey, there's coming a day when all this stuff's going to be in the rearview mirror. And we're going to get to be with God for all of eternity in a perfect place. Some of you dreading tomorrow, oh, i got to go back to work. And you're thinking about the people you got to be around and what all you got to be involved with. Let me just say this. There's coming a day, and we're going to get to be in heaven for an eternal rest, worshiping and praising our God. That's going to happen. But for right now, for right now, we're to be stewards of our time, of our treasure, of our talent, of our task. We're to be making the most of what it is that God has given to us. We're to be faithful. We're to be true. We're to be dependable. We're to be consistent. We're to be in our place. We're not supposed to waste what God has given to us. We're to be faithful in what we do with it. Now, go to Matthew 25, please. Ultimately, we get to see the Lord, and there's a thrill to that. But there's also a very much a, a sobering part of the idea of seeing the Lord. And what our goal should be, Christ gave a parable in Matthew 25, and, and it's the parable of the talents and, and what people did with their talents. And in verse 21, his Lord, Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou notice, good and what? Help me, church. Faithful servant. Thou hast been what? Faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Our goal is for everyone here to have a great judgment seat of Christ. I would love to see as your name is called and you step up before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I would love for every person here in this room to hear the words, well done, thou good and, help me church, faithful servant. Think about it. What was the word? Faithful. Faithful. Now, Pastor Clark has taught us so many times, anybody can be faithful. Anybody can be faithful. You don't have to have money to be faithful. You don't have to be talented to be faithful. You don't have to have a certain education to be faithful. Anybody can be faithful. And Pastor has already taught us so many times, if you're not faithful, you're not anything. That's his quote. If you're not faithful, you're not anything. See, sometimes we think, well, we must really be impressing God with, you know, all of our abilities and, man, we can move and shake and operate and, you know, our charisma and et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you what impresses the Lord. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is what gets God's attention. And here, people hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, that ought to encourage everybody in this room because anybody could hear those words. Because anybody can be faithful. Here's my question. Are you faithful? Are you faithful? Moreover, it is required. That's God's requirement 
Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man, and here's the challenge, be found faithful. Be found faithful. Everybody here, we need to hit the reset on faithfulness. There were some good things that came out of COVID. Don't throw a rock at me. There were some good things that came out of COVID. And there really were. And I could just name things, including our, in our ministry. Some of you that are sitting here tonight would not have been here if the virus had not come to South Jersey. And during that time, God brought you into this church, and I'm glad you're here, and thank God for it. And I can list a lot of different things that have happened during this season that have been good things. But one thing, one thing that I still feel we're working our way out of is what I'm going to call the COVID coma. The COVID coma. And you say, Brother Tyler, what is that? Well, we're still breathing, but we're barely acting like it. And, and what I mean by that, with all of our uh, becoming a recluse in our houses, to whatever degree that occurred, and, and just kind of how that bunkering down effect went on, and the big slowdown, some of you thinking, oh, I don't want COVID, but I'd like to go back to the slowdown. And you're thinking, I'm back and rolling with all that goes on living here in South Jersey. And you think about it, and we had that season, and, and I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're here tonight, but I, it, it just feels like we're still trying to get back where we're, where we're hitting our rhythm and where we're in sync and where we're rolling the way that we should be, uh, understanding that the time is short and we're to redeem the time and being all we can be for the Lord. And so I think it's important that we as a church family kind of recommit to this concept of being faithful stewards and to have the goal be found faithful. Go to Proverbs chapter 20, please. Thanks for turning. Proverbs chapter 20. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your faithfulness tonight. Proverbs chapter 20. And pick up verse 6, if you would, please. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. If you're there, would you read it together with me out loud? Ready? Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. A lot of times we like to talk a good game. But talk is cheap, right? Even, please hear me, and I don't mean to be, again, hyper-judgmental and I'm judging my own self as I say this. We can even come to an altar and speak things to God, but then not do all that we could and should do in following through in what it is that we even told God. And, and we like to talk about what it is that we're doing but sometimes we selectively leave out from the conversation those things that we're not doing that we should be doing. And, and we don't want to be people that are just talking about our own goodness. Most men will proclaim their own goodness. But a faithful man, here's the question, who can find? Who can find? Let me ask you a question. As God scans this audience tonight, does he view you as a faithful lady? Does he view you as a faithful teenager? As God scans the crown and, and God knows your heart, does God view you as a faithful man? Anyone could be faithful. Everyone should be faithful. And it is biblical to be faithful. And if you want to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, then you have to be a faithful servant. Now that's basic, I know, isn't it? putting the cookies on the bottom shelf tonight. And trust me, as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. Because I understand that in my heart, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love, it's so easy to just let things slip instead of staying faithful and consistent. I want to be the faithful man in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. And every person here ought to want to be a faithful Christian. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, please. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Paul's talking to Timothy, and in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, here's what the Bible says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to, what's those next two words? Help me, church. Faithful men who what? Who shall be able to teach others also. It is crucial 
that the people of this church, the adults right now, have a burden for the next generation that we would commit to them what it is that God has given to us. I mean, it's got to be a passion that we would make sure that the next generation is having committed to them this idea of us being faithful. Young people, the next generation coming up in this church, you need to be the faithful people that we can pass things to. Could I say it this way? When you're getting the handoff here, don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. And I appreciate it, again, the spirit of the testimonies here this evening. We need a next generation that's willing to step up in your place and be faithful. Last Sunday evening, Brother Mike Lemon was here and Lydia. Brother Mike stood in this pulpit here and gave testimony. And Pastor Clark talked about how back in the West Berlin building when Brother Mike got saved, he was just there all the time. And he was there faithful, and the testimony pastor gave was in his giving. He literally had to go to the place and point where he said to Mike, let's stop putting so much in. You need enough to live on because Mike got saved. Mike got on fire for God. It's no wonder he's been 20-plus years on the mission field in Mexico. Mike put his check in the plate. The last thing he did was put himself in the plate, and he completely gave himself to God. And this church was not built on people that were half-hearted, kind of just semi-committed. By God's grace, there's been pillars in this church over the past 40 years of some people who just decided, hey, I may not be most talented, I may not be most educated, I may not have the most money in the bank account, but by the grace of God, I'm going to be in my place. That's what this church was built on. And that's what we need. People who are faithful and committing to the next generation what it was that God's committed to us. Now, in the Bible, uh, look over 1 Timothy chapter 4 again. And, and I love this. Mm. No, I'm sorry. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 4. We'll get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice verse 17. 1 Corinthians 4, 17. You remember what Paul said in, in, in verse 2 here. We, we need to be found faithful. Notice in chapter 4, verse 17. For this cause have I sent unto you, who? Timotheus, who is my beloved son. Notice, and faithful in the Lord. Isn't that great? A testimony. Timothy was faithful in the in the Lord. Young men in this church, we need you to be faithful in the Lord. And that's what Timothy was. We won't go to all the scriptures, but in Numbers 12, 7, the Bible teaches that Moses was faithful. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 9, we learn that Abraham was faithful. In Acts 16, 15, we learn that Lydia was faithful. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 7, we learn that Epaphras was faithful. So in the Bible, there were people that were called by God, and it's been recorded in Scripture, this man or this lady, they were faithful. As God keeps record in heaven tonight, does God record that we are being faithful? The goal is to be found faithful. Look at Psalms chapter 12, please. Thanks for turning. Psalms chapter 12. And pick up verse 1, please. Psalm 12, this is sad. Verse 1, help, Lord, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. You know, it's a sad thing when we're having to cry out in prayer because we don't have enough faithful people. And, and we want to be a church that's full of faithful people. Look in Psalm 101. Here's a blessing. Psalm 101 and verse 6. Please notice Psalm 101 and verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. Mine eyes, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. I love this, and I want you to notice. God says, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. 
You know, when you're faithful and you're serving and, and using your things that you have from God for His honor and glory, when you're being a good steward, it may not be that everybody takes video pictures of this and puts it up on the screen. Look at this. They were being faithful. And, and it may not be that uh, you ever get somebody to hand you some type award uh, here on this earth and they said the faithfulness award and they recognize whatever service you've been doing in whatever area of your life including in family or church or at the workplace you may not get recognition here and in this time but let me encourage you God has his eyes on faithful people God is watching and God will bless and God will preserve and God will protect the faithful person. And we ought to desire to have God's blessing. Psalm 31, notice this. God's watching you if you're faithful. And Psalm chapter 31 and verse 23, the Bible says this, O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. He preserveth the faithful. So the Lord is watching the faithful, and the Lord is preserving the faithful. Do you get the idea? God's going to bless you if you're faithful. God's going to protect you. God's going to preserve you. God's going to bless you because you are being faithful to Him. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. And notice verse 20. I love this verse. I hope you do. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 20. This ought to encourage you. Would you read it together with me out loud? Proverbs 28, 20. Ready? A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Boy, you ought to mark that verse. A faithful man or a faithful lady shall abound with blessings. Blessings. How many of you want the blessing of God? Would you say amen? Amen. Hey, let me tell you something. This world and all that it has to offer is nothing as compared to receiving the blessing of God. What you need in your life is the blessing of God. You need God to pour out his blessings. You need God to put his touch on your life. And here's what the Bible says. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. You know what that means? Anybody can be blessed of God. Somebody looks at somebody, well, they're just so lucky. No, maybe it's they've been so faithful. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Not just a little bit, not just some little drip coming out, but God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing if we will be faithful. And again, the question is, are you faithful? Are you viewed as faithful by our God? That ought to be our goal. Be found faithful. Three thoughts, ready? Be found faithful in your walk with God. Be found faithful in your walk with God. How many of you know this? If you don't walk with God, it's not going to be very long and you're going to be a cold-hearted Christian. Do you know that? You're going to be a cold-hearted Christian. We've got to be found faithful in our walk with God. Primarily, I'm talking about in our prayer life and in our Bible time. We've got to be found faithful. I appreciate one of the young ladies mentioned about uh, the message Brother Randy preached about just cherishing your Bible. And he got saved as an 18-year-old, and his pastor said, Randy, you need to read your Bible every day. And now he's 40, 45, I believe he's 45 years old, and he said, by God's grace, since he got told that from his pastor, for all these years, he's never had a day when he missed his Bible reading. So it's no wonder God's using him, right? It's no wonder God's blessing him. Because he got a simple instruction from his pastor, you need to read your Bible every day, and he said, I can do that. Can I remind all of you, if you're able to read, every one of you, every one of us could read our Bibles every single day. And we need to be found faithful in getting in the Word of God. The more you get into the Bible, the more the Bible will get into you. And that's what we need to be. We need to be faithful in our prayer time. And, and the idea of spending time each day with God. So we need to be found faithful in our walk with God. How about this? We need to be found faithful in our witness. We need to be found faithful in our witness. People need the Lord. Do you know God's still saving people? Monday night, Brother Randy preached, and because it was so crowded, he said, if you want to get saved, why don't you go to the back and a counselor will talk to you. Fourteen young people got up out of the pews, out of the chairs, and walked to the back and trusted Christ. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. But all, I just want Jesus to come. Well, I'm glad he's still calling out a people for his name. Thank God. And over the course of the week, we had 20 total that trusted Christ. That is awesome. That's amazing. 
What a blessing. God's working in people's hearts. I mentioned Ron, who's been coming to the 8 o'clock service, and a friend of Vic, and, and he's been coming to service, and some others in the church have been talking to him, and I'd met with him once, and pastor had given him the Dunn book, and he had read that through, and he's been seeking the Lord, and he's been raised in religion, but he didn't have salvation. He turned 70 years old yesterday. I met with him this morning at 7 a.m., and we went through the gospel and the word of God. Let me tell you, it's quick. It's powerful. It's alive. Jesus still saves, and right there, my office this morning a few feet from here hey there's a man who went from on his way to hell who's now on his way to heaven because of the power of the gospel because Jesus still saves and we've got to have a burden for those who don't know Christ we can't just get mad at the world because we don't like the way it's going the way it's going is because they don't know our Jesus and let me tell you, the hope is not in the White House or any other part of government. And I'm all for doing what we can do, and we're trying. But let me just say something. The true answer for America's problems is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I have it. We need to share it. I love the song, My Testimony. But let me say this. Everybody that got saved the way Brother Mike was singing about tonight, since God's been so good to us, having saved us at a young age, it's our job to go out and tell somebody about Christ. And we do not well, we do not well if we do not tell. We need to share the gospel. And we need to be faithful. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time? When's the last time you handed out a gospel tract? When's the last time? But we had a big bump for team witnessing, but have you been back? We need people to be faithful. I mean, it's just prioritize. Just a couple of hours each week and coming out on a Thursday night or on a Saturday and throughout your week looking for opportunities at the workplace, amongst your neighbors, wherever it is that you are. People need the Lord. We've got to be a faithful witness. The last thing I want to mention tonight is this idea of being faithful, being found faithful to, to our church. To the local church God has put us in. Look at Acts chapter 2. And um, we'll look at these three scriptures. And then we'll go back to where we started and we'll be done. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Notice this. Acts 2, 42. You've got the early days of the church. A little advertisement. Pastors starting and teaching through the book of Acts. And teaching things about dispensationalism and other things. But in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42... Notice the early church, after so many got saved, 3,000 talked about in verse 41. And 42, the Bible says, and they continued steadfastly. There was a consistency. Can we use the word tonight? Continuing steadfastly. It means they were faithful in the apostles' doctrine. Notice, and help me, church, fellowship. And in what? Breaking of bread and in prayer. Here in the early days of the church, they were assembling together and they were worshiping God together. And the church in this local body, they, they had this fellowship that was so crucial, so important. Look at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, thanks for turning. Home stretch, don't leave me please. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. The Bible says, and upon the first day of the week. Now, the first day of the week is Sunday. And that's why we worship together on Sunday especially. And that's the day Christ resurrected from the dead. And every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon the first day of the week, notice this, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now you think I preach long. <laughs> Paul preached till midnight, and everybody stayed. Now Eutychus fell asleep and fell out of the window, and they had to resurrect him from the dead. Hallelujah. I can make comments there. I'll just keep moving. But here's the thought. They were gathered together, and they were there, and there was fellowship, there was breaking of bread, and Paul preached unto them. And it was the first day of the week. So the idea of us going to church, and as a local church body, we believe it's biblical that we could and should gather and worship God. Now go to Hebrews chapter 10. 
Hebrews chapter 10, very familiar verse when discussing the idea of assembling. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Pick up 24. And let us consider one another. Verse 24, notice that. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, normally when we use the word, it's like that person provoked me. Right? And we think that they provoked me to do something I shouldn't have done. They cut me off in traffic, so they provoked me to lay on my horn. And, and normally we talk about it like somebody caused you to do something that was not a good thing. But notice what the Bible says that we're supposed to do in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. We're to provoke each other, notice, unto love and to good works. We're to provoke each other. I'm supposed to be making a difference in your life. You're supposed to be making a difference in my life. And we're to, we're to come together in order to provoke each other to be better Christians, to love God more, to love each other more, and to be part of good works. Now notice verse 25. You can't provoke each other unto love and provoke each other unto good works unless you get with each other. So in verse 25, the Bible says, not forsaking the next two words, please notice, the assembling. Now, they're important words. The assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So the idea of people being unfaithful to church goes all the way back to Hebrews chapter 10 and I believe Paul. And in that day, there were people that they were not assembling. But instead, here's what we're to be doing, but exhorting one another. Exhorting one another. We assemble to exhort. Would you say that? We assemble to do what? Exhort. And we assemble to provoke, verse 24. Everybody with me, right? First of all, we said we assemble to what? Exhort or to encourage. And we assemble to provoke one another unto love and to good works. That means this. When I get around you, you're supposed to help me be a better Christian. When I get around you, you're to help set my heart on fire for God. When I get around you, Brother Bob, I don't want to love Jesus more. But Jeff, when I get around you, I want to do more good works for God by watching you faithfully out there on the bus route. That gives me uh, some, that provokes me unto good works. And, and I'm to be exhorting. I'm to be encouraging. You know, it's a tough world. And the devil's trying to beat us down. And the world would like to stamp out Christianity. We've got to be exhorting each other. We've got to be encouraging each other. You know, it's not good enough. I hate to break your heart on this. It's not good enough for you just to come into the church and sit here on the pew. You're to be an active church member. You're to be provoking one another and exhorting one another. And you teenagers tonight, you provoked us. You exhorted us with your testimony and with your song. I don't know about the other adults here. I got a blessing from these young people tonight, right? And young people, do you see that? You have opportunity when you're found faithful. God can use you to help exhort, to help provoke, including your friends. I like what Johnny said. Man, I don't want to make it about myself at camp. I wanted to look at the younger kids there. And he said kids who had never been there and help them to have good memories. That's a good thought. Are you there? He wasn't just a camp, just, well, what can I do for me? And you, you little seventh graders, here, I'm going to hang you up on a rack, and you know, and we'll come back for you tomorrow. And no, he, he wasn't, he maybe done some of that, but he wasn't torturing the kids. He was looking to be a blessing. I love that spirit, right? That's what we're to do, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So here's what that means. When we have church scheduled, the church family ought to be in the church. We need to be faithful to the house of God. We need to come to the Solid Rock Baptist Church services. Boy, I don't know about you, but when we had those months where the church was shut down and we were not assembling, I about died. I, I don't know about you, but, you know, okay, live stream and what we did and for however long we did it and those couple of months and we got through it. By the way, we'll never do that again, all right? Let me just tell you, all right? And, and <laughs> we're, we're, that's, that's another story. But, I, but I, I'll just say this, all right? And, and, and there were some of us in the church the whole time. But, but we, we had to go through that, and we got through it by the grace of God. And as we're now moving forward, but there is no substitute. I'm thanking God for live streaming. Everybody's watching tonight. I'm glad you're watching. 
from wherever you're watching. I had a family day from North Carolina. I said, man, yep, we, we watch the live stream services. People from all over the country and all over the world, people are watching our services at times, and they're up and people watch them at other times. I don't want them skipping their church to watch our church, but there's people watching it, and it can be a blessing. Thank God for the technology. And we have a few people from our church that really should not be here and in services, people with serious health issues that are ongoing things, and some of our elderly folks. But please hear me. The vast, vast majority of everybody in this place that calls Solid Rock their church family could be here. And let me state, we should be here in order to be found faithful. So let's, what I'm kind of saying, let's get past the COVID coma and let's be in church for our adult Bible classes and Sunday school classes. All you teachers should have been shouting amen right there. All right, let's be in our classes. My goodness, these children, we have lessons prepared for them. And they can come in and hear a lesson from a teacher who's prepared and prayed. And they're going to share the truths of the Word of God. There's nothing better they could learn than the Scriptures. I'm glad for Sunday school. How many people glad for Sunday school? Say amen. I'm glad for Sunday school. I learned my first Scripture verse in Sunday school. I'm glad for our adult Bible classes. Brother Mike's been giving us the lessons for our Through the Old Testament survey. Today we were talking about Saul, right? And Saul, he overstepped and he was overthinking and he overspoke, right? Something like that. I got the three. And, and we, had, we had where he, he shouldn't have sacrificed. And, and, and then when he said that people had to fast and, and then he didn't kill all the Amalekites. And man, we had that lesson today and it reminded us, don't be proud. Don't be proud, right? Hey, that's good stuff. Let's get in the adult Bible classes. You say, but sorry, why do we have those classes? Because we have all the different groups and the different age groups, and people get together, and thank God we break bread. Hallelujah, right? Donut ministry, and some of you people, keto cookies or whatever mess you're eating right now, and you got that going on, and coffee, hallelujah. If you don't like coffee, there's an altar here at the invitation, but for the rest of you, they drink it, and you got man, your juice or your cookies or whatever you got. You know, well, you know, I don't know. why You said 9.20 we're coming, but it seems like we're not teaching until 9.30. You know why? We got 10 minutes planned of fellowship. How you doing? Well, but I just don't like people. That's a problem. You're to be provoking. You're to be exhorting. You're to be encouraging. You're not supposed to say, well, I just don't like people. No, 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 no. Well, I'm kind of shy. We've got plenty of shy people here. Shy people find shy people, and you can be shy together. Here's the thought. We've got to exhort one another. We've got to encourage each other. Get to class. Oh, but Brother Charlie, 920. You go to work at 620 Monday through Friday. You can get here at 920 on Sunday. Amen, Amen Brother Charlie. That's good preaching. You're right. I know it is. <laughs> Come on now. Let's get in the classes Sunday morning. Let's be in our places. Man, Sunday morning, it should not be when the saints come dragging in. It needs to be when the saints come marching in. Here we go. Sunday is the time for church. People say, oh, but you know, it's game day. Game day, my eye. I don't give a rip about any game going on in this nation. I care about the house of God and the people of God, and I want to be involved in being faithful to the Lord's place to assemble. Sunday night, thank God. Again, I'm preaching to the choir, and we are circling the field. We'll land the plane in just a moment, all right? We got a little hung up here in, in, in a holding pattern, but please hear me. We need to be faithful to Sunday night. I'm glad you're here. Be here every Sunday night. And, and I love, listen, again, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to beat up, but I'm going to look at the screen. God bless you. Everybody, please hear me. If you can be here, be here. Hey, being in church is where you can exhort some. You cannot exhort somebody in your recliner watching pastor preach. Come on now. Get in here and let's be faithful on Sunday night. I'm a little bit afraid Thursday night, which ought to be the most well-attended service we have because it's prayer meeting. And how many of you know we need prayer more than anything? Thursday night, that's not where it's just, you know, well, it's a little bit inconvenient. Listen, I'd rather you come from work, come in your work clothes, get here and be in the assembly. It's important, church. So I'm done the message. But here's the challenge. Moreover, it is required in stewards, all that God's given to us, that a man, a woman, teenager, child, be found faithful. As pastor says, anybody can be faithful. And if we're not faithful, we're not anything. Be steady. 
Be consistent. Be in your place. I, I'm not saying to brag on, it happens to be my dad, Father's Day. Uh, but but I, I appreciate the fact that we've had the same pastor in this church for 40 years. Now, I don't know about you, but that speaks volumes to me. That there's just been somebody here who's been in the pulpit and been in their place. And we've always had people like that in this church. I look up sometimes, I see this, this pulpit here. And back on a Christmas Eve years ago, we had the candles and Michelle sang. And we went and one of the candles didn't get lit out and it smoldered. And we burnt this, this, this pulpit right here back in the old Atco building. We came in on Christmas Day, smoke-filled building. It was crazy. We didn't burn the building down. God saved it. But Mr. Jim Hawkins and uh, Rebecca, I know it's Father's Day and he's with the Lord. But Ms. Hawkins here and, and Brother Jim fixed this up. You know, Jim Hawkins was a faithful man in this church. He was the church treasurer here, and he was somebody to put his work in with his hands on the old Atco building. Some of you remember that. We had the beautiful trim there, and he was a craftsman, and he also did his secular job, and he did the treasure work, and he didn't sleep much, and he worked a lot. But let me just tell you something. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Thursday night, witnessing time, Jim Hawkins was in his place right up until God took him to heaven. God help me. God help you, be it by rapture or death, that we go out with our boots on in our place, being pillars in the house of God and pillars in the work of God. Boy, we get one opportunity to live this life. And it's going by so quickly. You know the last part of that verse, Hebrews 10, 25, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We don't need less church right now. We need more church. As it gets crazier out there, we're going to need each other more in here. So don't let the devil tell you, well, it doesn't really matter. Boy, he's a liar. He's going to, want to, he's going to try to work you one little step at a time. And before you know it, you'll be out drifting. Hey, stay in your place. When it comes to the service and the work of God, stay in your service place. We've got all types of ministry opportunities here right now. Brother TJ ran out. He went to go preach at his dad's tent revival. And, and he's our bus director. And I was talking to him yesterday. And man, some of these routes were running a skeleton crew. We need some families to step up. Like when my dad got saved and said to me as I was an eight-year-old boy, hey, we're going to go work on the bus route. And he was working drywall all week and working at the church. And when he wasn't at drywall and on those weekends, you know what he did? Man, he took me and we were out there on the bus route. We are working to go after people. I can name ministry after ministry where we need some people to get in the trenches and help us. So the challenge, again, I'm done. Be found faithful. Be found faithful. How many of you want to be faithful? Would you raise your hand? I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. I want to hear those words, good and faithful servant. I know I'm not always faithful, but he is. And I want to try to be as faithful as I can for God's honor, for God's glory. Father, I pray you'd help us right now.